because verse 10 comes along and says because you have kept my word about patient endurance I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell upon the earth taking a walk out into the back half of our acre here as uh, I've been watching the deer the last few moments and the last few mornings as they uh, kind of pass through from the woods and a, and a cornfield about oh half a mile away and they're moving back over into their bedding areas and they pass right through my garden area. And I wanted to show you a couple of things and, and just kind of make a point. And hopefully it will be a, a blessing to you, especially as you, many of you are longing and waiting for that trumpet sound that we believe is going to happen. I'm convinced that we are in the season. I don't know how long we have. The hardest thing for us to do is to wait. We need to occupy while we're waiting and that kind of helps ease this longing that we have to can I say it this way to be done with this current world this age this age and so in the mornings I I set out I don't know if you can see my house back there there's a, a beautiful patio over the garage and and I sit out there and on, a, on good mornings and that's where I read the word and and spend some time in prayer and I watch the deer come through and they come through the garden in certain areas and I want to show those to you so I am going to turn the screen around here for just a moment all right here is part of my garden around the outside edges of the garden and I have this year planted grapevines they're doing quite well for the most part you see this one is just it's going up to where it's supposed to be it'll be you know, a couple years before it gives grapes, which means you say, well, pastor, why are you uh, planting grapes if you're expecting the rapture? Well, I'm always expecting the rapture. If it doesn't happen, I'm gonna have some grapes. If it does happen, maybe this will provide something for someone during that terrible time called the tribulation. But notice how these plants are doing well, but this plant, the deer have gotten to. It's still doing well. It's still growing some leaves. This side is okay because, sorry for that swing around, I hope you didn't get dizzy, because that vine is away from the path of the deer. The deer don't come down this area quite so often. Let's continue to walk. I wanna show you some things. Our garden has produced well this year, but the farther we get up the path, I want you to see the grapevines. Look at that guy, he's been eaten off so many times, he's barely growing. That one's doing a little better. That one's doing somewhat better. And we get out here to the edge of the path on another trellis. And look at that poor guy. This was doing well. Look at this. That vine has had the leaves eaten off of it. It's still growing some leaves, but it's getting harder and harder as this one. Isn't that sad? I sit in my patio and I... I think of September 15th in Missouri is, is uh, opening deer season. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me switch this back to my face for a second. I, I truly hope that someone doesn't get offended by the fact that I hunt deer. Uh, deer hunting, and I'm not gonna get into the argument, but deer hunting, first of all, provides us an incredible amount of meat, healthy meat, and uh, I process it all myself. I use every portion. It's provided by the Lord from the Word of God. And, uh, and I'm thankful for it. But because they're eating my vines, I really am having a difficult time waiting for September 15th to get here because I want to protect my vines. And at the same time, I know how I can do it. 
before that though i just kind of have to sit and watch it happen because i'm not going to put poison out here on my on my vines now, can i make a, a spiritual analogy i hope you don't mind amazingly scripture israel is called in the secular sense it's called the fig tree the church is likened by Jesus, we as members of the church, as being branches on the vine. He is the vine, we are the branches, we're bear fruit, we're the vineyard. So there's those two analogies that kind of come together right now. The fig tree has been reborn. Listen, the fig tree has been reborn. It's putting on its leaves. 1948, May 14th. We're in that last generation where the fig tree generation is reaching. It's, it's in the 73rd year, Psalm 90. All of that you know already. Interestingly enough, the story of the fig tree that Jesus told was of a, a landowner who saw that he had a fig tree that had every indication that it would bear fruit, but it wasn't bearing fruit. And he, he allowed that thing three years and he was ready to cut it down, but the gardener of the vineyard said, no, 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 let me put dung around it. Let me work with it. Give it one more year. If you come back and it doesn't have figs, then cut it down. Do what you need to do with the tree. I believe that on the Feast of Trumpets 2017, September 23rd, as many others do too, I believe that. The sign in the heavens that was shown was Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. For three years, and, and by the way, that sign appeared over Jerusalem, not over us. It was over the dawn sky in Jerusalem. When that new moon appeared, it was right in the middle of that sign of the moon at the feet. In the constellation Virgo, the virgin, the woman, the sun was over her shoulder, over her head, and above her head were... 12 stars, 12 lights that formed a crown, and that was the constellation Leo with its nine stars and then three planets from our own solar system joined them and those lights lit up her head. That happened on in the dawn sky, September 23rd in Jerusalem. The sign was for Israel. For three years, it's been ignored and it had been ignored did you realize that September 23rd of this year, we are coming up on, in the Gregorian calendar, the, we're coming up on the fourth year. What does that mean? It means the fig tree has reached its time. The vineyard, what is happening to the vineyard? And that's why I brought you out here to my little vineyard to see these grapes over my shoulder. Look at this, just the, the ravaging of the, the grapevines. I have no grapes on here at all. It's too early. The vineyard around the world is being devoured. There have always been moments of great persecution in areas of the world and martyrdom. For those people who have stood strong and have lived the gospel, and follow Jesus Christ to the point of death, we give, we give thanks for them because they have given the ultimate of faith. I pray that people in Afghanistan and Syria and Iran and Pakistan and other places I, I, where persecution is heavy and people die for Christ, I pray that God would give them strength to stand. The problem really for the rest of the world is the church is living so close to the trail of the enemy. And that's why these vines are getting the worst of it because they are right on the deer trail. They are where the deer pass through. And so much of the church has wandered and strayed close to the path of the enemy and has, has absorbed its philosophy, has absorbed the world's crud. The wokeness the buying into the philosophies, the buying into the deception of the day. Listen to me. The church 
on the edges is being devoured. <laughs> Stay true in these days. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, you need to come to him, believe on him. All who call upon his name will be saved, the scripture says. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Confess him as your Lord. Have a mind change. Have a change of mind about who Jesus is and follow him. You will be saved. The day is growing so short. But I, I wrote down a few notes. I've got to do this with one hand. I don't know if I can do it, but I wanted to share a couple of notes that I wrote down earlier and a couple of verses. Pardon the shaking of the camera. I'm trying to get this in my, in my right hand. <laughs> but listen, the edges of the church is being devoured. The edges, the church that's living on the edge is being devoured. And I don't mean the edge of goodness. I mean the edge of the weird and crazy doctrines and ignoring the day that we're living in and pushing this jab and and all of the things that they are they're just flat out being devoured and being brought to a place of apostasy I say it as clearly as I can say it not out of anger but out of my heart aches for what I'm seeing but there is there is a promise to the fig tree after four years the fig tree is about to be brought into a time of trouble. I believe it is upon us. Again, I do not know the dates that the Lord has set, but he has set an appointed time. Listen closely. It is coming upon Israel. Israel has bought the lie. Israel has bought the lie. A good portion of its population it has had the first round of the viper. I'm going to call it the viper. And is preparing for the second and third and even fourth rounds of the viper. Israel has shown itself to be in love with the harlot of this world, the spirit of Babylon, the spirit of, of uh, science and all of this. It's about to come under the trouble called Jacob's trouble. The church is on the verge of being devoured, yet Revelation chapter 12 Verses 3 and 4 talk about how the dragon is about to devour the, the, uh, the man-child as the woman gives birth. It's not Jesus being ascended into heaven. We see from Revelation chapter 12 that that man-child is caught up, harpazo, into heaven before it can be devoured. I believe the church, the true church that is calling out to the Lord, and not falling into this apostasy and not giving way to all this crud and not living on the edge of wokeness where it's being devoured and doesn't even know it's being devoured. I believe the Lord is going to rescue his church. And for those of you who say that the rapture and pre-tribulation rapture is escapism, you are right. It's the Lord saving the church. Does that mean we're not going to go through persecution? No, we're going through persecution and it may get worse, guys. Stand strong. <laughs> Stand strong. But listen to this great promise. This is to the church in Philadelphia. Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. That's, that's why I haven't made videos the last couple of weeks because we have so, been so busy walking through an open door that the Lord has given us in our new church, Freedom Church. It has taken up all my time, but I'm thankful for it because we're trusting God in the time that we have left to give people freedom in Christ, to see people set free. And so we've been working for that end because the door is open. But he says this, I know that you have but little power, a little strength, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Keep his word. Stand strong. As in all the strength that you have, stand strong. Keep his word. Don't deny his name. Because, verse 10 comes along and says, Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell upon the earth. The hour of testing is coming. Here's my encouragement to you, believer. Be faithful to the Word of God. Be faithful to Jesus Christ. Be faithful to your faithful church. 
get in walk through whatever open door is before you do what you must do don't get caught up in this world don't get caught up I know it's easy to be discouraged and angry don't be discouraged and angry look up for your redemption draws nigh but at the same time grab someone's hand spiritually speaking share Jesus Christ with them get them in the door as best you possibly can it's the Holy Spirit who does the work but you're the one who gives the word you're the one who shares the testimony you're the one who shares the gospel do it and get away from the edge get away from the edge get close to the center get close to Jesus now is the time the time is upon us again I don't know how much time we have <laughs> so I'm trying to encourage you just like I'm speaking to myself I'm trying to encourage us all get close to Jesus do the work tell somebody about Jesus time is running out okay be the living vineyard See what God does in your life.